Welcome to another video. We're gonna get right into it today. So the soybean planter is ready to go. The corn planter is gonna be ready to go next week. So this week we are getting the field cultivators ready to go before we get to spring planting. Now yesterday we spent basically all day getting these things out because we have a so we have a shed at our other place that during the winter is basically just full of tillage tools. We try to keep all of our main tillage equipment inside during the winter. It just, the stuff lasts so much longer, especially here in Minnesota, if you can keep it inside. Or at least have a roof over it, keep it dry. So we spent basically the whole day yesterday trying to get all this stuff out, get it together. Uh, looks like Chris stayed a little bit later than I did. I didn't, I didn't film yesterday very much, I'm sorry. But Chris stayed a little bit longer than I did yesterday. He got this one partially together, looks like. Looks like he got some points replaced. I don't think he got the I don't think he got the rolling basket leveled yet. And there's a couple other things we have to look for. But uh, we have to go through the chemical system. We gotta put the tanks on the side of the tractor. We currently have the cat tractor hooked up to that field cultivator. Um, that's not gonna be on that field cultivator. We're gonna put the 9570 on it. It's just what we used to get it hooked up and get it pulled over here. But I came down early this morning before we start working on the mechanical stuff. Um, I'm going to start doing some measurements because this year, for those of you guys who don't know, I should rewind here a little bit. We use our field cultivators in front of the planters and we have these spray booms on them and we apply a pre-emerge in front of the planter and then we come behind the sprayer and spray another pre-emerge on after planting, uh, except for the organic obviously. But this year I have our Raven 440 monitors. They're gonna be connected to the John Deere 2630 monitor. So we're gonna be able to have um, an application map and a tillage map going at the same time. At least that's the plan. So I gotta measure some offsets. I gotta measure, I have all the offsets measured for each tractor. And so now I just have to measure the distance from the drawbar to the spray boom, both the front and the rear spray boom, because depending on what pre-emerge we are applying, we might use the front or the rear spray boom. And I do that for both. Got to get the measurements of the tilt equipment itself. And I just built another MTG box. Um, I'm gonna put in the cat tractor because the cat tractor is our spare tractor. So in a moment's notice, if we need to switch tractors, we can do that and then we don't have to switch around any technology stuff. Okay, so that MTG box is gonna live a lovely life down there. And I just, you know, I gotta make sure that it doesn't bother my foot position at all. I mean, my feet, yep, we're good. Okay, now it's gonna, now it's gotta reassign the terminal and then we'll see if it works. And there we go. It's now showing up on my op center. So this is ready to go in case we need to switch a fuel cultivator or switch a tractor. We just got to put the monitor in here, plug it in, and should be ready to go. So taking offsets, both our cultivators are not the same model. That's a 200 and this is a 255. So the offsets are slightly different and the booms are a fair amount different too. So I'm just going to line up my tape measure. Got the iPad here, just gonna go put them all in that way. I can make a setup file, put them directly into the John Deere monitor and call it a day. Okay, we got the tanks pulled out of the shed to go on the side of the tractors. Back here in this trailer. Now this is a fairly simple process. Basically, there's two tubes in the tank. They go in that hole and that hole. And there's little plugs in the back that you bolt on. There's the tanks. Shouldn't be too bad. A little bit sketch. There we go. Oh, we, oh, we got all the way. Look at that. That was a lot smoother than the last one. Hey, the the caps are on the toolbox. You want to hand those to me quick? Should we run this track? I don't think they're gonna give me the caps. You know, after down here, you're out of the wind. It's kind of nice. I don't, I don't care. A little warmer. Yeah, I get it. That's fine. Go. 
one more tractor, put tanks on. And then we'll probably get the fuel cultivator off the cat, put it on uh, 9570 right away. Maybe, I don't know. But you know what? I think these tractors will look a heck of a lot better with the tanks on. I don't know. Look meaner. Uh, these we put a lot bigger bolts in this one than the other one. This one and the other one? Yeah, this one we custom made these ones and they're a lot bigger bolts. Okay. If you want what? If you want to see the if you want to see the video of us making those brackets, we have a video last year. I'll put it down in the description or you can click the, the thing up there. Look at that. That was so tight that you pound them in and pound them out. So from factory, these fuel cultivators come with a smaller draw bar. And then we had a bracket in here so we could put a smaller pin and I felt it wobbling around. But there, our neighbors sold their fuel cultivator, took off their large pin, and they gave it to us. So appreciate big, it, guys. Big shout out to Randy and Roger. What's the difference between the X? Day. What's the difference between the excavator pin and the normal this grease? It's just it's for pins stickier. <laughs> it's like it's like that. You can tell it's an aspen because of the way it is. What? You never seen that? So there's a video where he's looking at. It. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even gonna begin. Is that like a generational thing. Or yeah, I must be a generational thing. But like, I asked you what the difference was. He said the pin grease is for pins. Uh, like it doesn't tell me what no, the actual no. difference is. Yeah, no. yeah. Problem is going downhill. Oh wow! Look at that. This is incredible. I'm a recorder's putting it into a box so that way. And in, in a previous video, in a future video, we're like, where in the heck did we put that? Maybe a subscriber will remember. Like, you put that in the toolbox of the 9530. There you go. Help us out. So this 9570, every time we drive around the yard, I get a phone notification telling me that the left track tension is, oh, can't have the music. Uh, that the left tack, tack. Uh, that the left track tension is low, so. We're gonna retention that here quick. Track, there's storage, tracks. Tension, 220B-6. <laughs> Numbers don't work. Yeah. 220B. 220B-6. 220D, <laughs> 220B-6. Drive tractor forward on level ground. That's the line. Oh, track tensioning. Select time tab. What? Okay. You want a continuous. So we want one continuous. Yeah. Okay, set. Time. 
Tom continuous. Flow. Five. Five. Okay, we're on five. Then what? Pull the control lever rearward. Rearward? For how long? Rearward. Six minutes. <laughs> Off track to... Oh, so we're detensing it right now. Oh, is that the detench? Where yes. See? Where do you see it? Oh. Detention. Don't want to do that. No. <laughs> I think you push it the other way for six minutes. <laughs> Well, I'll track to detention. Deten we don't want a detention. We want <laughs> you just do it the opposite. Yeah, but it can't be for six minutes. That's the other one was five. You gotta push it for. It pushes it for that long. Make sure that you just get it all level though. Put, put it the other way and press your timer for six minutes. Press forward. Can uh, oh, set my phone timer for six minutes. I was about to say, I don't think there's a six minute option on here. No, 180 seconds is as far as it goes. Okay, let me get my phone out. We're gonna be scientific about this. Stopwatch. Wait, so is it down or up? It's uh, it's forward, because it's back was... So it's forward. I'm still talking about retention. Why are they... Apparently they don't want us to tension our tracks. They just want us to take them off. They're talking you pull it back, it detentions it. If you push it ahead, it detentions it. I think I found a flaw in their book. <laughs> I mean, really. <clears throat> rearward to extend position. Allow track to detention for six minutes. So that was rearward to, to extend, extend it. position. Now, where was it at? They're still going back, but they're still detentioning. <laughs> I hear it says push control over forward to retract position. And then allow to de detention. Yeah, so we're talking about detentioning. But we want to place. extend it though, right? Yeah. So forward. But it said detention. If you push it forward, it says oh, okay, it no. detentions. And if you push it backwards, it says But it. But we want to, but they do have the retract and extend. So if it says retract here to detention, we want to extend. So rearward. So you want to pull the lever rearward to extend. Rearward to extend, right? No, here's what I'm saying. Rearward to extend. Low track to detention. Do we want the cylinder to extend or pull back? We want it to extend. So then we pull it rearward. I know it still says detention, but... Yeah, well, the track gets sloppy. We know we went the wrong way. Oh, pull it back. Yeah. And start timer. So does wait. your does your fancy thing over there does it tell you the, the pressure on the track like a cat does? Probably not. I don't know. Does it say how to do that? Aren't you like a John Deere I, technician? I I work on forty six forties, not forty six hundred very much. So when somebody calls you on the helpline and says, "Well, I said, well, let me look it up. I don't have my materials in front of me. Oh, look it up. Sure, get, get snooty." <laughs> If you call, I'm going to get snooty, yeah. <laughs> Can I talk to somebody else, please? <laughs> somebody without an attitude? At South Dakota State, uh, CMB uh, brought in a data center where we work on uh, working with data, and then also we are on the customer support line for the tech, or for the, yeah, the precision ag technical support line for a little bit. So... If you're a CMB customer and you call, there's a chance you might get me an answer. If he's snooty. <laughs> if he calls, I'm going to be snooty. <laughs> I don't know all your fancy stuff. I guess I go out and see if the track is getting tighter or looser. Um, that's the wrong track. What? That's the wrong track. I was wondering how we might as well do them both. Okay. It doesn't change anything. No, it makes me feel better. I, okay, that's fine. So, I won't just leave when your timer's up. I'll just. Don't shut the flow lever off. Don't shut the lever off. I'll just shut it off out there and into the other side. Okay. <laughs> the 
book says six minutes, we're going to go six minutes. Yeah, fine, whatever. Here. <laughs> I honked the horn at him, you can't hear it from the cab. So for those of you guys who don't run track tractors, you actually use the tractor's hydraulic system to tension the tracks. Oh, I gotta restart this. You actually use a tractor's hydraulic system to tension the tracks, and I think it's been that way for a long time, because we do the same thing on our 8410. Yeah, if you wanna decrease the tension on the tracks, you push the lever forward, and it takes oil out of the cylinder that does the tensioning, and if you do the reverse, it extends it, so. Pretty simple. Well, there we go, we took a little trip down the road, and let me check, see if we got any codes. Hit the refresh button. It's loading. There we go. No stop codes. Perfect. Good to go. 21st century farming. Installing updates. Before you get to the field. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Good thing there's no OSHA people on self-employed no, no, farmers. No. What? Hey, we got we got an OSHA thing that's on the desk in the office. What what kind of OSHA thing? I'm serious. Some, the OSHA guy must stop by when no one was here and marked it in our office. So is this okay to show on YouTube? <laughs> well, if we're self-employed, it doesn't matter, right? I mean, if you're if you're the boss and you're the one on top of the skid steer, is it is it is it is it, is it employee safety if you're the? You probably got to put up some employee. Do you remember uh, in in Gold Rush, Fred Hurts and his son? They were the owner operators and they and they, they were shut down. Really? Oh, shut them down. Let's go to the one with Chris. Well, there's stupider things on YouTube, so I'm not too worried about it. First four down the middle are the. So one, two, oh, okay. Okay. Last thing we're gonna do before we head home tonight is get this tractor plumbed up. And if I remember right from previous years, this kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> or if you're under the tractor does. If you lay it all out. Well, being that it's Dad and I gonna be doing this. I'm guessing I'm gonna be under the trailer or under the tractor. Dad and I. What? I was kind of thinking you. I'm gonna show my son how to do it. Oh. Well, there. Um. There's all sorts of straps in this. Ready to catch it? <laughs> I need Chris to catch it. I used it to fix the piece you broke. <laughs> That's your fault, yes. Dad's been looking for this wrench like the past hour, and he made a big deal about it. Turns out, he was the one that lost it. Dad was the one that lost it. Well, yeah. the funny thing was, here, I'll put it back. Yeah. I was going to send out a snotty text whenever my wrench broke, <laughs> but in the back of my mind, I was thinking, maybe I've used it recently. <laughs> Okay, one second, let me. This one, this one go on the inside or outside of the tube? Outside of the tube, I think. So I was a couple zip ties short in finishing this up, but it's hung up enough I can show you guys how it works. So, this is a plumbing system that gets fed from the Demco side tanks and then runs the booms on the fuel cultivators like I was showing you guys earlier. 
So this is a fill port. So we have it right up front. So that way the tender truck can pull up on the road. We can pull the tractor right up to the ditch, hook it right up, works pretty good. The large hose right here goes to a four-way T. I don't know how well you guys can see that in the dark. So that comes to here, fills up the tanks. And then when we get them filled up and we're gonna start sucking back to the fuel cultivator, we just shut this one off and it sucks from the same hose right here. Now the smaller line is the return. So if we shut the, the boom off on the cultivator and we're turning around, but we keep the pump running, it, it puts that chemical back through the small line right here and then it goes back and agitates the tanks. And then if we only want to use one tank for some reason, uh, which we do quite often actually, if we're getting like towards the end of a field or end of the year, we can shut these valves, that way you can only use one tank. And it works pretty dang good. You know, we, we used to have the tanks on the fuel cultivator. That kind of sucked because it would get the weight distribution of the frame all off and it, it just never worked very well. Uh, we've had different, uh, not in my lifetime, but before me, we had different tank setups and different tractors and they've never worked very well. This is the first system that we really like that works fantastic. Um, they drain, they drain evenly, they fill evenly, just, I don't know. It just seems like they work very, very well. So there we have it guys, that's gonna be the end of this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, leave a comment, I'll read them all. If you wanna subscribe, hit this button right here. Otherwise, click one of these buttons to view another video. See you in the next one.